Welcome back to another Vulkan Game Engine tutorial. The camera transformation is the final transformation for us to cover in the sequence of steps to get objects from their original coordinates to the pixels of your screen. The camera transformation, also known as the view or eye transformation, allows us to view the world from any viewpoint and orientation. It's as if we could place an imaginary camera within the world and move it around capturing what it sees and displaying that to the screen. First, let's recap our current process. We start with a 3D model that exists in object space. By object space, I mean the vertex positions are specified relative to the object's local origin. We then use the game objects transform component to create a 4x4 matrix to transform the object's coordinates from object space to a shared world space where it exists along with every other object in our scene. This is commonly known as the model transformation matrix. Following this, we currently apply the perspective projection transform, which transforms objects within the viewing frustum into Vulcan's canonical view volume. But don't mix up the perspective projection transformation with just the perspective transform. Perspective projection is the perspective transformation combined with an orthographic projection. And finally, the viewport transformation occurs, mapping Vulcan's canonical view volume to the actual pixels of the frame buffer. So it may have become clear where we would like to fit in the camera transformation. The current drawback to our system is that once in world space, only the objects that are within the frustum will end up getting to the display. Essentially, we would like to allow the frustum to be placed at any location and point in whatever direction we wish. Or perhaps a better way to think about it is rather than move the frustum to the objects, we need to move the objects to the frustum. By moving the objects in the world as if we were moving them with some theoretical camera back to the origin and then reorienting the view direction to point in the canonical view direction, we end up with every coordinate relative to the camera's position and orientation. This is known as the objects existing in camera space. So the camera transformation can be constructed with a translation matrix that moves by the negative of the camera's position since we are moving the camera back to the origin, and then combining that with a rotation matrix that realigns the direction the camera is pointing to the positive Z axis. Translate, then rotate. Let's get to coding. Start by opening your camera header file, and just underneath the projection matrix member, I will add a new private variable called view matrix and I'll also initialize this to the identity. This matrix will be used to store the camera transform. And just like with the projection matrix, let's add a getter function. I'm going to copy the get projection function and paste it below, and rename projection to get view, and return the view matrix instead. Now, there will be a few different ways that are convenient to initialize the view matrix. More than just the three I will show here. So add void set view direction, which will use three parameters. First, a glm vec3 for the position of the camera. Next, a glm vec3 for the direction the camera is pointing. And finally, another glm vec3 indicating which direction is up. And I'm going to initialize this to a default value pointing in the direction of the negative y axis. So add equals glm vec3, 0, negative 1, and 0. Next, I'm just going to copy the setViewDirection function and paste it below, and then rename the function to be setViewTarget, as well as change the second parameter to be called target rather than direction. This method is useful for when you want to have a camera locked onto a specific point in space. No matter how the camera or the targeted object moves, the object will be held in the center of the view. For the final method, type void set view y, x, z with a glm vec3 position and a glm vec3 rotation parameter. This last method here will use Euler angles to specify the orientation of the camera. 
Euler angles are what we use back in tutorial 10 for specifying the orientation of objects using the transform component, and they can be just as useful for orienting the camera. We will use the same YXZ Tate Bryan angle ordering that we've previously used. Now, the implementation of these three functions I've included in a paste bin link in the description below. It's really just not worth typing these line by line as it's very easy to make a hard to find typo. So copy all three functions and navigate to your camera implementation and paste the function implementations wherever you want so long as they are within your namespace. So let's quickly go over these. In the set view direction function, these first three lines construct an orthonormal basis. Simply put, an orthonormal basis consists of three vectors, all of them of unit length and orthogonal to each other, so intersecting at right angles. We can use these basis vectors to construct a rotation matrix and combine that with a translation matrix from the camera's position back to the origin to get the final result for the view matrix. Next, we have the set view target method. This one's pretty straightforward. We just use the set view direction method, with the direction being given by the vector from the camera's position to the target object's position. Also, in hindsight, it might have been a good idea to add some assertions checking that the direction provided is non zero. So, you may want to do that yourself. As the third method, we have set view yxz. We start to construct the rotation matrix just as we did back in tutorial 10 for the transform components map4 function. To construct the view matrix, we combine the inverse of the rotation matrix with the translation back to the origin. We use the inverse of the rotation here because we want to rotate from the camera's current orientation back to the canonical view direction. This is the, the opposite of the model transform where an object starts at the origin in its default orientation and we rotate it to its world orientation. Alternatively, rather than using the inverse, I could also have just used the negative angle values here instead. Mathematically, it works out all the same. Okay, so rotation matrices have the special property that their inverse is simply their transpose, meaning the rows of the matrix become its columns and vice versa. So just as with the set view direction function above, we multiply the transpose of the rotation matrix by the translation back to the origin to get the final view matrix. Okay, now there's not much left to do. First, let's navigate to the simple render system implementation file. And just outside the for loop, I'll declare a local variable using auto called projection view and set it equal to camera.getProjection multiplied by camera.getView. Every rendered object will use the same projection and view matrix. So this way we avoid doing the calculation for each iteration of the for loop. Okay, then inside the for loop, replace camera.projection with the projection view local variable. Next, I'll go to my app implementation file and let's test out these methods. So underneath where the camera is first declared, I'll add camera.setViewDirection GLM vec3 with zero to keep the camera at the origin, followed by GLM vec3 with the arguments 0 0.5, 0, and 1. So this way we're still looking mostly down the z axis, but now also slightly to the right. I'm going to build and run my code, and now the cube appears on the left hand side of the window. And this makes sense because if the camera looks to the right, then everything within its view should move in the opposite direction, so to the left. Let's try another one. First, I'm going to comment this line out and underneath add camera.setViewTarget. And I'll move the camera to the position glm vec3, negative one, negative two, and two. It really doesn't matter. I'll then specify the target as glm vec3, 0, 0, 2.5. If you recall, this corresponds to the center of the cube. So again, build and run, and we see the cube from a different angle, but it stays centered within the window. One more thing. Don't forget about the near and far cliffing planes. 
If I move the camera position way back, even though we are still looking directly at the cube, we will no longer be able to see it. I would need to increase the far plane's distance in order for the cube not to be clipped. Okay, we have successfully covered all of the viewing transformations. Objects initially exist at the origin in object space. The model matrix created by the game object's transform component will move the object from object space to the shared world space. Every object then has the camera, also known as the view transformation, applied to it. This moves the object from world space to camera space. In camera space, the camera is at the origin and all object coordinates are relative to its position and direction. I want to re-emphasize that a camera object doesn't actually exist. We just transform the objects from world space as if the camera was there. Finally, we apply the projection matrix. This captures whatever is contained by the viewing frustum and transforms it into the canonical view volume. Then as the final step, the viewport transformation maps this region to the actual pixel values. And that is it for today. Honestly, I am a little relieved to finally have finished covering the viewing transformations. These past few videos have been heavy on theory and light on coding. I hope you guys are looking forward to the upcoming change of pace as much as I am. Next video I think will be on game loop timings and keyboard input. So thanks for watching and keep on coding. Cheers.